The devil destroys those who destroy themselves. Fire Sale by Lawrence M. Janifer Let's not be silly about this, the devil said casually. You don't need any proof and you don't want any proof. General Debrett nodded very slowly. You're right, he said. There's an, an aura, a feel, something new. Of course it's new, the devil said. You've never seen me before, not directly. The general thought of an incident in Korea, a few incidents, but the devil was going on. Let's not waste time, he said. I'm in a hurry and I'd like to get this settled. When you looked at him directly, the devil was not at all good looking. He was, in fact, rather horrible. The general tried to look away, failed, and at last came to the point. All right, he snapped. What is this you want to get settled? Why have you come to me anyhow? I certainly didn't, uh, call you up. No, the devil said, shaking what passed for a head. But a man named N. V. Basilienko did. Basilienko? The man who... The head of the Special Services Branch of the Red Army, to put matters in your own terms. The general almost smiled. Well, you're certainly a special service, he said. His lips were dry. This, he told himself, would never do. He took one breath and became very nearly calm. What did he do, set you on me? Because that won't work, you know it. He didn't set me on to you, the devil broke in. As a matter of fact, he would be very annoyed if he knew I was here. Then what the devil? No offense, the devil said, and grinned. The grin nearly lost General Debrett his hard-won calm. It was an extremely upsetting grin. It's just that Comrade Basilienko offered me a deal. The general closed his eyes. That way, he told himself, he appeared to be thinking, and he didn't have to look at the figure which had appeared in his private, securely locked office to talk to him. It's no surprise to find you on the side of our communist friends. Oh, now, you mistake me, the devil said silkily. I don't take sides. I don't have to. You human beings do quite enough of that to keep me occupied. No, as I said, Comrade Basilienko would be much irritated if... It was surprising how much more composure the general found available with his eyes shut. Now you're the one who's wasting time, he snapped. What are you doing here? Ah, the devil sighed. The military mind. Efficiency, forms, reason. There seemed the echo of a chuckle. However, to put matters in a nutshell, my dear general, Comrade Basilienko offered me a little deal. He has given me quite a good bargain for your death. For my... Almost, the general opened his eyes in surprise. Exactly, the devil said with great composure. He has promised me the burning alive of every inhabitant of the town of Yavorchenko. Thirteen hundred people. Not a very large town, of course, but then it's not a bad offer just for one man. The burning alive. General Debrett licked his lips, opened his eyes, and shut them again. You mean... He will see to it that the townspeople are burned alive, if I see to it that you are made quickly, efficiently, and entirely dead. The chuckle came again. The means, of course, are left to me, and I've had some rather interesting ideas. Then you're going to... you're going to kill me? Now? Here? Panic fluttered in the general's breast. Oh no, the devil said. I came here, as a matter of fact, to ask you a question. A uh, question? That's right, the devil said. In a nutshell, general. Have you got a better offer? There followed a period of silence. The general, at last, managed to find a sentence. A bargain? What sort of bargain? The devil's voice was carelessness itself. Oh, it said, you know the sort of thing I like, or you ought to, by reputation if no other way, and by the sort of bargain Comrade Basilienko made with me. 
A town, the general thought, burned alive, screaming and dying. I suppose, he said cautiously, it's no good appealing to your... To my better nature, the devil asked. I'm afraid not. For one thing, I haven't any, you know. Oh, but, well, the sort of offer you want, I... I can't even think of it. It's not possible. Then Comrade Vasilienko is to have his way? The devil asked. I... I warn you, the devil continued. My ideas are very interesting indeed, though I doubt you will have the leisure to enjoy them. And then there is the thought that you will be handing the good comrade on a platter his dearest wish. Well, the general asked himself sternly, what was the Cold War for? Men sacrificed themselves in wartime, and he was valuable, he knew that. He had a head on his shoulders, he could think and command and lead. Well, it wasn't egotism. Vasilyenko wanted him dead, and Vasilyenko was not famous for acting at random. He was valuable. Perhaps, in fact, he was worth, oh, 1,300 or so ordinary men, untalented for this war. But to condemn that many to death, to hand them over to the devil. About his own death, General de Brett could be calm enough, after a second or so. Men died, that was that. But to give Basilienko an advantage, to give him, as the devil had said, his dearest wish. It was, he reflected bitterly, a very nice dilemma. Ends and means again, just as it had been in school. How long ago? Ends and means. The Cold War versus the imminent death of... Well, asked the devil. General Debret opened his eyes. Wait a minute he said suddenly. Let's think this out. Have you an offer? Listen to me. Even the devil didn't look quite so bad anymore. The general's voice was full of urgency. Vasilyenko wants me dead. Why? He is a Russian, the devil said. At the moment, that seems to be reason enough. Silly, of course, but there it is. He wants me dead because I'm valuable to the United States, the general said. Because, as long as I'm around, it isn't quite so easy for him to figure out a plan for easy conquest. Well, the devil seemed impatient. His tail, the general supposed, was twitching. Well, if you kill me, the general said without any hesitation, and there is a war, the war will be shorter, and that'll be less to your liking, won't it? Everything seemed to stop. The devil chuckled and nodded, and thought, and then, slowly, nodded again. So, that's your bargain? Not mine, the general said. It's in the nature of things. If I die, and the war comes, I get less out of it, the devil said, and thirteen hundred people won't come near to making up for it. I see. He paused, and then said again, I see. Yes. And? You are, the devil said, perfectly correct. I shall refrain. Yours is the better bargain. I... General de Brett was talking to empty air. There was no one, no thing in the room except the general himself. And, of course, his continuing thoughts. Five minutes passed before General de Brett whispered, very softly. My God, what have I done? What have I really done?